This video will give an introductory usage example of a utility called JPackage. Uh, JPackage is in early access. It's destined for a future uh, JDK release, hopefully JDK 13 and going forward. And its purpose is to take an ordinary job application and package it up such that it can be installed natively the way native applications are. That, that bundle will contain all the necessary resources to run that application in a standalone fashion. Uh, our program in question today that will package up is something called Socket Client FX. It's a simple Java FX uh, user interface program and represents the client end of a socket connection. Uh, there's a sibling application called Socket Server FX. And once these two applications are connected up, we can send and receive uh, text-based uh, messages to one another. But uh, today we'll worry about the Socket Client FX application. Uh, and what we will do is we'll start from scratch. We'll pull down this source, we'll build this, and prior to creating the J package, we'll also create a J-linked runtime image, as this application is modular and is based on JDK 11 source. Let's get to quickly building this application. Uh, Socket Client FX is available at GitHub. Uh, so all we need to do is just get a copy of the git string, the git URL and then issue a git clone from the command line. So we'll do a git clone of that string. And now we pull down the source. From here, we can either use this command line terminal or we can open up an IDE such as NetBeans and open up the project. So um, in this case, the project is a Maven-based uh, project. So we can issue commands either, again, through here or the terminal. We'll go ahead and just use a terminal um, because it's, it's simple enough here. So by moving to that directory, uh, we can issue a Maven package, and that will build the application. And again, it's not very complicated, so it's done real quick. Um, after that, we can just issue a Maven exec Java to run the program. So we're done. We're actually we've actually built the program uh, from source. We pulled it down. Now. What we want to do prior to issuing the jpackage command is we want to create a jlink runtime image. So uh, these commands can get pretty hairy. So instead, we have a, a, an easier way. We, we provided a script in this application called link.sh. So we'll run that now. And we'll, we'll add an additional flag, a flag called minus e, which will echo the, the jlink command out to give you a feel for what we're doing here. Now, it looks pretty long. However, most of this is the module path. Uh, so here's our jlink executable. Module path takes up almost everything here. Uh, basically, it includes all the libraries, all the modules that are external uh, to the standard Java runtime that are required to build this application. So there's a lot of JavaFX stuff in here. Uh, there's actually an external socket library called comms jtconnors.socket, which is pulled down from Maven repository. Uh, and then finally, um, uh, there is the socket client FX module, which is the application itself. Okay, so after providing the module path, we just say to compress it to make it a little bit smaller. We have to specify a launcher name, which is called socket client FX. That's how we'll start this up in a second. Uh, and then we need to point to the main module, that's socket client FX, forward slash, and then the main class, uh, com JT counter socket client FX, socket client FX. And then finally, we need to specify where this image will be put out, output image. So there you go. So now there should be an image, a directory called image. Uh, if we do a du on it, you'll give you an idea of how big it is. Uh, it is about 50 megabytes. So we now have an entirely encapsulated runtime image. If we go to the image and do a um, bin java minus list modules, except that I can't type. Um, you see that it only incorporates uh, about a dozen or so modules rather than the much larger uh, uh, Java runtime. So in order to start up this application now, all we need to do is an image slash bin slash socket client FX, and now our application runs from that restricted runtime image. Now on to creating our uh, application image that is specific to the Mac platform. Uh, we're going to use this JPackage utility now. And like before, because the command line option can get a little unwieldy, um, we will create, we will issue a script to make life a little bit easier um, called 
create app image.sh. I'm going to issue it with a minus n command, which an option which basically says show the command line, but don't run it yet. So here is our command again, a couple of lines long. So uh, first thing is we we start off with the jpackage utility. It is not part of the JDK 11 uh, runtime that we use to build this. You need to download the early access version of OpenJDK 13, right? Um, and you cannot take the jpackage utility and move it into your current JDK. It will not work. You actually need to download a separate package. Over time, as this becomes mainstream, you'll be alleviated, but at the time being, you need to do that. So uh, once you have that path all down, you need to specify one of two directives, either create image or create installer. So we're going to create the image here. Um, next, you need to uh, say where the runtime image that was created by JLink uh, resides. In this case, it's in our image directory. Um, you, in addition to the image, you also need to specify where the built jar files are. Uh, the, the jpackage utility will need to find at least the main one and figure out where the main class is. Um, so that is in the target directory. That's typically where Maven builds go. Um, all the stuff needs to get put into a directory. We'll put it into the app image directory and we'll name the, the particular application socket client FX. And then finally, we need to specify the main jar. Uh, it's called socket client FX 11.0.jar. That resides in the target directory. Uh, JPack will, will know to, to extract the, the necessary information out and create your application. So let's go ahead and, and now run this. Um, and in a couple of seconds, it'll come back very quickly. So there is now an app image directory created. Again, we'll, we'll do a DU on this to figure out how big it is. It's about 53, 52, 53 megabytes. Um, and now what you can do is if you open up the Finder application and get to the directory where this is, it's under NetBeans Project Socket Client FX. There is an app image. Notice that it has a nice little logo associated with it. I can drop this in on the Mac into the applications directory. And now that is an installed applications such that such that if I go into the directory, I just double click on um, Socket Client FX application. It'll start up. Um, and if I delete it, well, first of all, I can lock this onto the uh, dock. I can delete it. And now just simply start it up by clicking on that application again. Finally, there is another step that could be done, uh, namely to create the native payload that typically is available in the Mac world. That is a DMG file. Um, so again, to make things a little bit simpler, we created a script. Uh, we'll execute it now. Notice that it does fail. Uh, the reason why is there is a bug, uh, well, a known bug that has been fixed, but it isn't uh, available yet. Evidently, the next update will fix this problem. We're currently in February, late February 2019, so hopefully in a few days or so, we'll be able to revisit and do a better job. Uh, but just to give you a feel for how one would ultimately create one of these G uh, DMG files, uh, we again issue the JDK version of JPackage, this time with a create installer directive. Um, and then we need to specify the type, in this case, DMG on the Mac. In the Windows world, it might be EXE or MSI. Um, we specify an output directory called installer. We need to also refer to the image that we created in the app image directory uh, and the name of the program, Socket Client FX. And finally, we need to name this particular uh, DMG, and it's called Socket Client FX. Uh, so again, hopefully in a couple of weeks, this will be fixed. But Hopefully this was helpful in getting an understanding of how JPackage works.